Hey, greetings! Performance reviews where I give you the review from the technician's point of view. Today I have gathered a bunch of vacuum cleaners here, uh, not just to look at, but to address a comment that I saw over and over again. It would appear from these comments here when I did the little experiment between the Shark and some of the other machines, one of which was a Hoover, one was a Henry, that the vacuums push differently. And people thought I was skewing the results or pushing one faster than the other, not realizing that vacuums all handle a little bit differently. Why this seems simple and like something that most people would understand, judging by the amount of comments I got, I don't think it is. So today we're going to explore in the video how certain machines push with different attachments and how just certain vacuum cleaners push. First, we're gonna try several different attachments on the same vacuum. We're gonna use this little Jasper right here, which we're gonna fit a variety of attachments on just to see how it acts. At the end of the video, I'm gonna set up some markers and you're gonna see kind of the speed of which machines move on their own because they all have their own cadence and it's not something that's talked about too much, but it is interesting. So first, let's talk about the bottom side of a cleaner. Now, we have machines that have rotating brushes like you see on the right, but for the first part of this video, we're gonna focus on these two. These two look very similar. One has more metal on the bottom, but the diameter, the opening of right here and right here are very different. They look similar, but they're different. And that makes these two handle completely different. Also, the fulcrum point's a little bit different where the wheels are but that's not so much for the point of this video. So let me show you something about these two heads. We're gonna get into the meat and potatoes of this. You see I have two orange markers set here on the bottom of your screen, and we're gonna push the nozzle back and forth, and then we're gonna switch the nozzles and see if it pushes differently. Again, we're gonna use the same vacuum cleaner. Now I've pushed two nozzles on the same vacuum cleaner the same distance. You'll notice there's a time difference between them. Not a lot, but it's enough you would notice it on camera. And that's because these two nozzles channel the air differently and one of them sticks to the floor far more than the other one. In fact, let me go on over to the wall and I'll show you how dramatically different they are. So I'm gonna put two different vacuum heads on the same machine at the same power level. And we're gonna see if one of them will stick to the wall and one of them won't. Again, same machine, different head. Notice this one sticks to the wall. Now remember the difference between the air channel size? This is the result, a nozzle that has so much suction it can actually stick to the wall. Now what if we do that same test but we add an attachment with a spinning roller. Would that help this move faster over the floor? Well, if you notice there, how much smoother that seemed to glide over the floor. Spinning that roller on carpet sure made a huge difference. So by now, I think you understand that the nozzle shape and size makes a difference in terms of how it pushes. And when we add a roller, it makes a huge difference. But what if we reduce the suction, but add a more aggressive roller? How easy is this going to be to push across the floor? Let's find out. Well, that certainly was fast and easy. Let me show you why that was. Now, it doesn't take any sort of expert here to see that there are more bristles on this vacuum than there were on this floor tool earlier. This machine is an ultra lightweight machine with not a tremendous amount of suction, just enough to get the job done, but a really aggressive roller. You notice I have it leaning on the chair here. I'm gonna just turn it on and let's see what happens. You notice the machine pulled itself off the chair without me touching it and proceeded to dump itself on the floor. Well, the brush roller on this machine is so aggressive that it pulls itself forward, but when we go for the backstroke, it's a lot harder to pull back. 
And on certain carpets, it makes this machine unusable. Now, what if instead of just bristles, we had a full contact and a second roller? Would that cause the vacuum to push faster than this vacuum? Well, absolutely. That's simple. So when I'm showing the shark push as fast as it does, it's the natural nature of the machine. It's very similar to this loop, uh, which is still alive, unlike the shark. <laughs> um, unfortunately, that shark met an untimely demise. This loop has that double brush design, similar to the shark. Um, so let's see how the loop pushes on the carpet. The loop also has two brush roller speeds. For this example, we'll leave it on high. As you can see, the loop pushes quite easily on carpet. For the next part of the video, we're just gonna do the same thing from one orange strip to the other orange strip with a variety of different cleaners, just to show you that the times are a little bit different. First up, let's do a stick vacuum. Next up, let's do the Hoover that was shown in that video. I think it really shows that this Hoover was designed for carpet and pushes quite easily. Next up, I have a Kirby. And if you're unfamiliar with a generation series Kirby, this is a self-propelled vacuum, which means there's actually a gearbox in the rear, a twin clutch gearbox in the rear that powers the rear wheels both forward and backwards. So the natural pace of this machine is set literally by the machine driving itself. Let's see what happens. If we were going for speed alone, I think that is the absolute fastest of the bunch. Let me show you what's happening up at the handle. So with the Kirby, if you push forward or pull back, you see the handle moves slightly? That's what shifts the drive lever and activates the clutch in the forward or the rear position. Let me show you how that works. You saw that I was barely touching the vacuum, but it was jerking back and forth. Well, the gear ratio of this original G3 is very exaggerated, just like I'm showing you. There's no movie magic or anything happening. It's a very fast to respond gear ratio. And Kirby, 30 years after this machine was made, finally did change the gear ratio and make it a little bit better. But it took them 20 some years to get that ratio right. So that's why this one is a little bit more exaggerated probably than the newer generation you might have at home. Let's try a self-propelled and non-self-propelled machine that are the same vacuum cleaner. I have here two concepts. Ones, they're both kind of bluish, but this one to the right, that's the like the bluish green uh, two-tone machine. This machine here is the self-propelled. The all blue machine on the left, this is the non-self-propelled. Let's see what the difference is, how they push. Wow, I didn't realize until I was editing this that I got two strokes for every one stroke of the non-self-propelled machine. It really shows how fast these early self-propelled vacuums were. As you can see, this old Hoover is a little bit more smooth than that Kirby was, but you still saw it jetting itself around all right, watch how little effort we use when we push this machine. So that really shows the difference on two machines that are as identical as you can get, but because the manufacturer added a transmission to the machine, they push and handle completely different. Now there is another feature that makes vacuum cleaners handle a lot differently. I'm just gonna touch on it, but it does make a difference when you're pushing the vacuum. Traditional vacuums are square. This is all the movement you have. But many, many years ago on canister vacuums, we got to see a 45 degree swivel neck added. I believe TriStar in the 30s was the first one to start doing this. But this is a feature that's been on canisters really ever since. And it really makes maneuverability really nice to just be able to turn and steer the vacuum. Well, not all vacuums have that. 
And vacuums with and without that feature are of course going to handle and push differently as well. One that's interesting is the loop has that feature, but the nozzle actually lifts off on the floor uh, because the pivot angle is wrong on that machine. Where when we look at the LG and we pivot it, for the most part, the nozzle stays on the floor. The pivot angle's good on this machine. Of course, later this pivot feature would become famous on the Mila S7 series, which was in development in, but first to market that it was probably the most advertised was like the Dyson Ball. But today you can get even a budget Hoover with the swivel neck built in. And again, this makes the machine wobble sometimes side to side when you try and push it in a straight line, especially if they get the swivel neck wrong. I wanna show what a good swivel neck is like to use versus kind of a so-so one. You notice the Mila pushed rather straight, went off to one side a little bit where the motor was, but that was it. Let me show you what it's like to push a bad swivel neck. You notice when I did that, the loop moved off to the left side and then to the right side when I moved it. That's because the machine's really unbalanced where the Mila, even though the motor is a little heavier on one side, there's some counterweights and it's a lot more balanced. The loop, not so much. And you can see this get exaggerated by really bad swivel necks on machines, like the shark I showed in the video and there's a variety of other ones on the market, but that kind of gives you an idea what the difference is between a good and a bad swivel neck when you're trying to push it straight. When you put all this stuff on camera, you can really see the difference. And when you see this video of me pushing a Henry a Hoover, which doesn't even have a swivel neck, that Hoover is just like straight. Like that Hoover does not turn, it is straight, it's fixed. You really see the difference there. In fact, let's push the Hoover since it doesn't have a swivel neck for just a point of reference here. And you can see, because there's no swivel neck, it just pushes straight back and forth. Now somebody's gonna point out that we've mainly talked about carpet. Well, that was the main premise of the video. But I do have a lot of hard floor, and I wanna show that this premise is the same on hard floor. Machines walk away and they're a little different. And I think the loop is probably the most closest example I have to the shark currently to show that. If you notice the shark kind of pauses and stops when it gets to, it's not the shark, I'm sorry, it's the loop, it feels so similar. Uh, when it gets to the grout line, well, what happens is that roller gets caught in the grout line and it takes it a minute for the torque to build enough to pull it out. And that's why you see it push so inconveniently. So again, I'm just gonna hold this just like in my hand, like so, we're not actually gonna be like pushing it and we're just gonna watch it take off. And you can see it's really inconsistent due to that double roller design, which makes the machine really hard to push, whether it be on hard floor or carpet, it just kind of will go at its own pace, which is sometimes faster, sometimes slower, sometimes it's gonna jerk compared to a normal vacuum cleaner. At the end of the day, when you're just trying to push a vacuum cleaner, on hard floors particularly, watch this straight suction cleaner just kind of glide on the floor. Because there's no spinning brush creating resistance, it doesn't matter 
on hard floor. This pushes really easily on hard floor, but we saw it jerk and get overly stuck to the carpet when we tried to push it earlier. So I hope again, this kind of explains the point of why you see things move at different speeds in some video. Why I would love to show you every single vacuum that's in the room that we're in, that would take hours. But I hope this little demonstration shows the differences between just how vacuum cleaners push and handle a little bit different when you change even the most minute feature. If you want to know more about one of the specific vacuum cleaners in this video, I'm going to put a link in the description with chapter cards, but I have a specific video on basically everything that we've shown here, except for maybe one or two, but there will be a video eventually. Go to my YouTube page, which is YouTube slash performance reviews with a computer, and there's a search bar that appears. Type in that. That's probably the easiest way to find it. If you want to talk about something you saw in the background that we didn't talk about, check out our Discord server where we talk vacuum cleaners all day long. Thanks for watching, folks. Have yourself a great day. <laughs>